Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome to the course on uh, medical biomaterials. We will continue on the topic of uh, biopolymers, uh, mainly proteins and um, we will then uh, transform to another important uh, biomaterial that is called hydrogels. Okay. So, we were talking about uh, in the previous class uh, about proteins. What are these proteins? They are the condensation polymers made from amino acids and polyamide. So, obviously, they have uh, the peptide bond or the amide bond that is C double bond O N. There is a reaction when you have between NH2 and COOH that is the acid you end up having this uh, particular peptide bonds. So, in nature we have uh, proteins found in abundant and uh, they can be used as a biomaterial okay. like skin, organs, muscles, hair, fingernails. So, a lot of uh, biomaterials uh, protein based biomaterials are found for example, your collagen, keratin, silk, elastin all these are uh, different types of uh, protein based uh, biomaterials. In the previous class we talked about this collagen, okay. collagen is most abundantly found protein in the body. It has got a triple helix structure, so it has got a 2 alpha 1 uh, in between you have a slightly uh, different alpha 2 it forms a triple helix, okay. it can get denatured and they get separated out and if there is an enzyme they can get degraded into smaller peptides. Okay. There are 28 collagen types that are found. The type 1, 2, 3 is found uh, uh, 80 percent of all collagens within the body and um, so it is found in bone, cartilage, tendon, skin, muscles. It is composed as I said of triple helix like this alpha 1 chain and alpha 2. Okay, alpha 2 is slightly different in chemical composition. So, a lot of applications it is used in vascular so, already there is a commercial product in vascular prosthesis, collagen polyester composites used for peripheral arterial reconstruction, it has got very good structural durability, long term patency, low infection rates, but then it can be used as adhesion barrier membranes. So, um, we can uh, reduce internal scarring following surgery by separating the internal tissues and organs during healing, it has got good handling properties, it can be contoured to the tissue. Um, okay, that is the beauty of it. Collagen shields, so we can have bandage, contact lenses which gradually dissolve in the cornea, mechanical properties of the shield protect the healing corneal epithelium from the blinking action of the eyelids. It can be used for delivering drugs, it lubricates uh, the surface of the eye, increases the contact time between drugs and cornea, increases epithelial healing. Then comes collagen sponges. It is very good for uh, severe burns used as a dressing for any type of wounds. It can absorb large quantities of tissue exudates, smoothly adheres to the wet wound bed, shields against mechanical harm, secondary bacterial infection. Um, it can be used for delivery of steroids, ex for example, intravaginal delivery of uh, lipophilic compounds like uh, retinoic acid for patients with the cervical uh, diaplasia. Okay. Then comes uh, collagen gels. It can be flowable or injectable drug delivery system for ophthalmic use. Uh, initially, it is in the form of a liquid which turn to gel after administration to the eye. It can be used for sustained delivery of uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs um, for inflammation, pain, joints or even antibiotics. Okay. Then uh, atilo collagen gels used as a carrier for chondrocytes to repair cartilage defects. So, it is quite widely used because uh, the cartilages contain primarily collagen, hence it is used uh, repair of such. Then it can be made into pellets or tablets, mini pellets small enough to be injected into the subcutaneous space through a syringe needle, uh, prolonged retention of large molecular weight of drugs and decreased maximal concentration in the serum. So, such administration are also possible of collagen. 
but um, the problem of collagen is there could be um, cross contamination because the collagen is uh, uh, obtained from um, bovine. So, there could be um, bovine related diseases which may get transmitted to the human. So, that is one worry about uh, using collagen in large uh, scale. Then comes gelatin, this is uh, found from collagen, it is a denatured collagen obtained by the controlled hydrolysis of collagen which is extracted from animal tissue. So, obviously, gelatin is much more safer than collagen because um, you do a chemical transformation hydrolysis reaction. Okay, so, they are really linear in nature unlike collagen, um, collagen is a triple helix. Um, so, the linear mixture of polypeptides because you are doing a hydrolysis disperse according to size and chemical reactivity. So, we can have polypeptides of different chain lengths. Okay. The properties depend on collagen from which the gelatin is extracted and the method of conversion whether I am uh, hydrolyzing with acid, base or enzymatic. So, this is a typical structure, uh, linear structure of gelatin. Okay. It exhibits amphoteric be behavior due, the, due to the presence of both acidic functional groups as well as due to the presence of uh, basic functional groups. Okay. As you can see, it contains both acidic functional groups, okay, C double bond O as well as uh, the OH. Okay. So, it has both the properties. Um, so, we can um, encapsulate anionic or cationic uh, type of uh, drugs, molecules, ions and so on actually. So, it is cheap and readily available, very good biocompatibility, biodegradable, less antigenic than collagen, contains abundant RGD motifs. As you know, RGD is a very important peptide uh, sequence which helps in cell proliferation. Uh, cells are able to identify itself um, diverse and accessible functional groups allows for chemical modification. You can see so many different functional groups, so many different functional groups. So, we can do lot of chemical modification of gelatin, uh, support cell addition without compromising the cell phenotypes. What are the disadvantages? Risk of carrying harmful agents like bovine, okay, related toxicity heterogeneous mixture of different sized proteins with wide range of molecular weights. Because I am doing hydrolysis of the collagen, so we could have polypeptides of different chain lengths, different molecular weights. So, that is a disadvantage. So, properties will be more of average rather than singular. So, applications plasma expander. So, jello fusine 4 percent weight by volume solution of succinylated gelatin. So, it is used as intravenous colloid it behaves like blood filled with albumin, increase in blood volume, blood flow, cardiac output and oxygen transfer, transportation. So, we can inject gelatin into that. Of course, as you know gelatin is widely used in food, flavoring industries, um, confectionaries and so on. Wound dressing, gel foam dressing. So, it expands, um, takes up lot of volume, it is used in fresh open wounds to stop bleeding. Tissue adhesive, highly elastic and adhesive. So, we can close surgical skin insertion by applying this gelatin. Drug delivery, used for delivery of both hydrophilic and hydrophobic anti cancer drugs. Sustained release, um, as I said, it has got both acid, acid and basic functional groups. So, we can have uh, cationic or anionic drugs um, encapsulated with that increased targeting efficiency and minimum toxicity, rapid uptake and long term retention by gelatin nanoparticles after administration and uh, tissue engineering scaffolds. We can make uh, scaffolds for growth of different types of uh, tissues. Okay. It can support growth of uh, hep G2 cells, spontaneous formation of functional hepatocellular aggregates. Okay. So, a lot of applications. Next comes silk. Uh, silk as you know is used quite a lot in fabric. Of course, um, it can even be made into biomaterials. It has got very good mechanical properties, tensile properties. Okay. So, obviously, silk um, can have very good application in uh, biomedical applications. Okay. So, it is a protein polymers that are spun into fibers 
by Lepidopetra larvae such as silkworms, spiders, scorpions, mites and flies. Okay. It is a fibrous protein synthesized in specialized epithelial cells that line glands in this organism. So, obviously, um, it contains sericin and fibroin. This fibroin is the central, sericin is the sticky material surrounding it. The fibroin contains amino acids like glycine, serine, glycine, alanine, glycine, alanine, as you can see here and forms the beta pleat keratin. So, it contains fibroin that is in the central and then it contains sericin which is the sticky material surrounding it. Okay. So, silk has got very good uh, mechanical properties, highly biocompatible, it can help in tissue um, growth and also as a cell um, scaffold. Provides structural role in cocoon formation, nest building, traps, web formation, neck protection obviously. Um, produced by silkworm, silk and spider silk, biocompatibility, biodegradability, self assembly, mechanical stability, controllable structure and morphology. So, that is the advantage of this silk. So, cosmetics used due to their glossy, flexible, elastic coating power, easy spreading and adhesion characters, release from sunburns, the crystalline structure reflects UV radiation, protective buffer between skin and environment. Lower micron silk powder added with hair and massage oils, finer grade silk powder, ingredient of liquid cosmetic preparation can be used for wound dressing, burn patients, silk protein derivatives, ceratiopeptidase used as anti inflammatory, anti tumor fascian for treating acute sinusitis, tonsillectomy, oral surgery, tooth filling, cleaning, extractions, and so on. And also surgical stitches, like I mentioned, it has got very good tensile properties. Um, it does not cause inflammatory reactions, absorbed after wound healing, so it is bios resorbed. So, it can find a very good applications as surgical sutures. Biodegradable microtubes for repair of blood vessels, molded inserts for bone, cartilage and T3 construction, drug delivery ability to form hydrogels in situ, attractive candidates for localized controlled delivery of therapeutic agents. Ability to incorporate drugs at room temperature without the use of toxic solvents, delivery of protein or DNA based therapy. So, silk um, can find application in wound dressing, surgical sutures, biodegradable applications, drug delivery systems and so on. Then comes fibrin. What is this fibrin? Uh, this is a fibrinogen. This is a soluble plasma protein converted to polymeric fi fibrin. So, fibrinogen which is the soluble plasma protein converts to fibrin which is uh, a blood clot, especially when there is a damage to the vascular system. Um, I talked long time back, the fibrinogen is converted to fibrin, forms the clot and closes the um, gap, prevents the uh, blood oozing out. So, this is a fibrous non-globular protein. So, this fibrin together with platelets form hemostatic plug or clot over a wound site. So, applications. So, fibrin sealant, most effective tissue adhesive, obviously it is produced by the body. So, if you can use it as a biomaterial for sealing uh, tissue repairs, then nothing like it. Formulation of fibrinogen and thrombin at very high amounts combined with calcium and FX3 used as adjunct to hemostatis in patients undergoing surgery, enhances healing, minimizes scarring. Okay. So, a lot of applications. Scaffold has sites for cellular binding, accelerates tissue regeneration, no inflammatory reaction. So, it is very good um, applications um, especially as a sealant, prevents the blood flow uh, during surgery processes it does not uh, lead to any inflammatory reactions, um, accelerates tissue regeneration. Okay. So, lot of uh, proteins which are uh, natural, which can be used uh, for uh, uh, tissue regeneration, tissue engineering applications okay, um, as a sealant and uh, as a vascular uh, bioresorbable material. So, we looked at uh, uh, biopolymers, two types of biopolymers, one is uh, the saccharide based polysaccharides, the other is protein based. 
that means they have this peptide bond and protein based uh, or widely found uh, in animals and natural environment uh, ok. So, they also have uh, very good applications um, in a biomedical area ok. Now, uh, we will look at uh, something different they are called the hydrogels hydrogels as the name imply um, can absorb a lot of water and uh, they are uh, polymeric material which swells in the presence of water. So, they can be used in uh, areas of uh, wound dressing, slow drug release and so on. For example, look at this picture, this is a polymeric hydrogel made, made up of uh, cyclic beta glucan and carrageenan um, when it is in the dry state as soon as we add water as you can see it really swells, expands and um, reaches a very soft appearance, very highly hydrophilic, wet. So, they can find application especially in open wounds. So, they are 3 D network of polymeric chains that are cross linked by chemical or physical bonding. We will look at what type of chemical or what type of physical bonding that are uh, happening in hydrogels ok. They absorb and retain large amount of water at least minimum 10 percent by weight or volume. In fact, they can go up to 40, 50, 60, 70 percent, 100 percent ok. There are many hydrogels which can retain its own weight. They are created by hydrophilic groups domains present upon hydration in aqueous environment ok. So, they are permeable viscoelastic lubricious hydrophilic chemically diverse environmentally sensitive uh, allow solute transport multifunctional. So, we can use it for wound dressing for drug encapsulation drug delivery. So, many applications uh, disadvantages of course, poor mechanical properties difficult to handle sterilization how do we sterilize this hydrogel that is a big issue um, that needs to be thought of more in detail. So, two types of hydrogels they are classified into two different categories permanent chemical hydrogel reversible physical hydrogel ok. So, the uh, physical interactions um, create this type of hydrogel. So, obviously, when the water um, is removed they come back to its original uh, uh, dry state permanent um, that is a chemical reaction takes place. So, obviously, we cannot reverse this. So, there is a covalently cross linked networks equilibrium swelling state depends on the polymer water interaction parameter on cross link density. So, the amount of water that can be taken up by these hydrogels depend upon what is the cross link density. Now, if you look at the reversible hydrogel or the physical hydrogel the networks held together by molecular entanglements secondary forces such as ionic hydrogen bonding or hydrophobic interactions we call them as non bonded interactions. The dissolution is prevented by these forces. So, these are reversible can be disrupted by changes in physical conditions or stress ok. So, we can bring it back to its old form and so with these um, have some advantages over these in many situations ok. You look at each one of them um, physical chemical I said. So, the physical we can have strong and weak types of we uh, bonds we could be hydrogen bonds ionic bonds hydrophobic bonds agglomeration bonds like xanthan paint polymer polymer complexes matured acacia gum these are all weak strong could be glycine nodules lamellar microcrystals double triple helices elastomers block core polymers gelatin these are called strong now chemical uh, as i mentioned before uh, there is a reaction uh, chemical reaction um, bonds forming. So, there could be a condensation type of reaction, addition type of reaction, cross linking type of reaction, condensation like polyester gel, addition could be kinetic growth ok, poly divinyl benzene grafting CMC that is carboxymethyl cellulose acrylic acid, cross linking that is end linking random cross linking poly dimethoxyloxane cis polyisoprene. So, two types of gels the physical um, and chemical physical you can have weak uh, physical forces strong physical forces 
the chemical could be condensation reaction, addition reaction, cross linking reaction. So, this uh, nice uh, um, table was taken up from this uh, particular reference hydrogel methods of preparation characterization application with this DOI. Now, uh, the source of hydrogel it could be natural, it could be synthetic or a hybrid that is combination of both sorry it could be non ionic hydrogels, it could be ionic hydrogels, ampholetic that means combination of both zeteronic, zeteronic hydrogels depending upon the charge, depending upon how physical or chemical depending upon the charge. Cross linking we can have a physical cross linking, we can have a chemical cross linking. Polymeric composition we can have a homopolymers that means only one uh, um, monomer is used copolymers that means we can have uh, more than one monomer is used multi polymers we can have many many polymers into the applications wound dressing cosmetic implants dentistry food drug delivery all these are the areas of course as i mentioned before they have very poor mechanical properties so obviously they can be used alone in some of these but have to be used uh, for example in conjunction with uh, a strong uh, um, synthetic material polymer for implant applications ok. So, this uh, nice looking um, table was taken from this particular references called two photon polymerization of hydrogels versatile solutions to fabricate well defined 3D structures with this DOI it is a review article. Uh, so, there is water inside this hydrogel. So, there are three types of uh, uh, water present in the hydrogel very interesting right. The free water it is water that is not intimately bound to the polymer this is almost like the bulk water present outside the hydrogel ok or pure water ok. So, it behaves like the normal water that is present outside. So, it undergoes thermal transition at temperature analogous to bulk water say like 0 degrees. Then we have freezing bound water that is water that is weakly bound to the polymer chain and undergoes a thermal phase transition at a temperature lower than this free water ok. It is called a freezing bound water. Then we have non freezing bound water that is completely bound um, it is not like bulk water or it will not freeze like not um, weakly bound water ok. This is very tightly bound to the polymer which does not exhibit a first order transition or the temperature range from this to this ok. This non freezing water that means that water will not freeze um, when you bring it down to 0 degree centigrade um, ok. So, we have three types of water free water which is almost like the water that is present in the bulk outside then we have the freezing bound water um, the water that is weakly bound to the polymer. So, it will not behave like a pure water or the bulk water, but it will have some temperature transition which will be lower than this and then we have the bound non freezing water which is very strongly bound it will not undergo any phase transition um, at these condition like uh, um, water to ice and so on actually ok. So, three types of water and uh, these three types of water could be nicely observed using a um, differential scanning colorimeter ok. So, if you look at this for example as a function of temperature exothermic um, so we can have uh, this as the ok the the, the free water this uh, this as the um, freezing bound water and this could be the uh, non freezing bound water third time ok. This is the free water which is the uh, like a bulk water this is the freezing bound water this is the non freezing bound water ok. So, we will continue on this uh, hydrogel in the next class also thank you very much for your time.